Hi guys and welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. This week we're going to do a coronamid pattern, or buzzers as they're known here in the UK. So without further ado, let's get into it. The hook in the vice then is a Hanak H300 barbless hook. This one's at size 10 and it's on a medium wire and it's finished in black nickel. The thread I'm going to be using today is from UTC. It's a 140 denier and as you can see it's a black thread. Now the reason I'm tying this buzzer, the other week when uh, I was at Rutland, uh, my friend Ben, he managed to get some video footage of a buzzer in the water and I wanted to tie an approximation of that buzzer. Now it's akin to the grey boy but uh, this one's slightly different from some of the others you might have seen. So I'm going to have a go at it and we'll see how we get on. So first thing I'm going to do is catch my thread on in behind the eye and I'm going to get two or three wraps onto the shank of the hook. Now, I'm just going to remove my rat's tail at this point, and what I'm using is I've got some white flexi floss. Now, it's on this big massive spool, as you can see. I've already taken a bit off. Please don't ask me where I got it, because I really can't remember, but uh, I've had it for a long time. As you can see, it's a big spool, and it's lasted me for ages. So, I've got the end here, and what I want to do is I've pre-waxed my thread before I cast it on. I want to just get quite a tight loop, sorry, quite a tight pinching loop onto the flexi floss. Now once I'm convinced that I've got it tied down quite tightly, I can exert quite a lot of pressure onto this floss. And what I want to do is try and keep it as flat as possible. So as you can see, I'm really stretching out over the back of the shank of the hook and I'm bringing my thread wraps over the top of that. As I get nearer the bottom I'm exerting, exerting even more pressure. Sorry, it's very early in the morning, I can barely speak. Uh, I'm going to bring it right round the bend of the hook and then I'm going to park my thread just there. I can let up on the pressure. As you can see I've got a nice smooth finish on the shank where I've pulled it tight and that's looking pretty good so far. Next I'm going to tie in a secondary ribbon. What I'm using is some magic tinsel. Now this comes in two sizes. It's 132 of an inch or 1 16th of an inch and I'm going to use the 132. Now as you can see here one side's got a shimmer like the old videotape uh, recording stuff and on the other side I've got a nice deep red and what I want to use is the deep red for this particular fly so when I tie it in I want the shiny videotape side to be down onto the shank of the hook. I'm going to bring my thread round and catch that in. Then I can go all the way up and I want to flatten out my thread as well. So that's the reason I like to use UTC with uh, my buzzer patterns. You get quite a lot of bulk where you want it. If you want to slim it down, simply give your thread a little turn anti-clockwise and it'll flatten out nice and steady for you there. It's my secondary rib trying to get on the show and just keep it out of the way. And then all the way up, and I'll just capture in that last bit of flexi. Right, I've got everything tied in now. What I want to do is try and keep this red rib out the way. And what I'm going to do is just attach my hackle pliers. And just lay it on my vise, just to keep it out of the way. Next, what I want to do with the flexi floss is really put a lot of pressure on my initial turns. So I'm going to bring that round as tightly as I dare without snapping it. And I want to keep that kind of pressure up for about three turns. So I'm really coming on hard with this at the moment. And the spacing I've left is hopefully about the width of my secondary rib. Now on the fourth turn, I'm going to ease up a little pressure not too much, but just a little. And then the next turn, 
I'm going to let up a little bit more pressure and so on and so forth. So what you're getting is that kind of tapered body that the natural has. Bear with me. I'm going to bring that all the way up to the top. And then when I get to the top, I'm not so worried. And I can capture that in. Like so. A couple of tons. A couple of tons in front. Just make sure you come over that. What you don't want is your flexi pinging back on you. So I'm going to come in with my scissors, take away my excess. Then I can grab hold off my Textrine rib, or magic tinsel as they call it. And what I want to do is bring that around, ensuring that I go the right way. And remember, I want the, the red to be showing up on this and not the, the videotape colour that we talked about earlier on. I'm going to bring that up in between the flexi floss. Try not and catch the point of your hook, it will ruin your day. You'll be reaching for that giant pillar. So avoid the point, come up through the flexi floss, and all the way to the top. Now at the top you don't need to be overly worried because we are going to tidy this up with a thorax. Now you can see already that it creates quite a pleasing body and although it looks quite blingy you would be surprised at how close to the natural this is. It looks very similar. So I can take away my excess, save that for the next fly. Next thing I want to do is start to find an area for my thorax. So I'm going to go back about as far as there, that'll do it. And I'm going to invert my vise. Now once the vise is inverted, what I want to do is add another little bit of flexi floss. I'm going to fold it in half like so. And I'm going to snip it. Next thing I want to do is line that up. Now I've got it towards me. As I bring my thread over, it will roll it onto the top of the shank like so. And uh, that's looking not too bad at the minute. Just going to tilt it to make sure I'm in the right position. That's looking pretty good. So I'm going to come in with my thread all the way back to the start of my thorax. Just make sure that I've hidden all that flexi floss with my thread. Don't want a big bulbous thorax really. So I'm going to stop there, bring my vise back around to the front, and then what I'm looking to do is one turn at the eye there. Bring the next one over and give that one turn as well. Now I'm just going to check that the cheeks are sitting how I want them, both sides. Then I'm going to give two more turns. Now what I want to do next is just open out them buds a bit and I'm going to use a dubbing needle on either side. Now this is this is not the simplest fly to tie by any stretch, but I do think it's worth the effort. If they're particularly locked on to a particular buzzer that's hatching, then you can do worse than use this pattern. So I'm fairly happy that I've got them buds opened up. I'm going to pull my flexi now quite, quite hard and just remove my excess as close to my thread as I can get without actually cutting your thread. Then 
couple of turns just to finish that off and then I can come in with my whip finish tool three turns and just give that a little tighten up and remove the excess now of course the tie-in part I would say it's easy it's not an, it's not an easy part on this it's, it's a bit fiddly and it takes quite a bit of practice but it's worth the time and effort now next then I'm going to use a pro marker just on my wing buds now I'm using red but orange works quite well as well just depends on what flavor you want I'm going to invert my vise and just get at the very bottom of the buds a little bit of colour I'm going to leave the vise like that for now and obviously the next stage is working your resin onto your fly and this can take a bit of time so I'm going to speed this process up with the trick of the camera Once I've got my first coat on then, what I want to do is start to get the shape that I'm after. And that's just a case of filling in just at the bottom here. I want to just make it a little bit thicker. Not much, mind. Uh, I don't want the body getting any thicker. So I'm working the resin around the thorax area and just at the start of the body. And the last step of the operation then is some varnish. I'm using this stuff from Uphaven. It's a brush on varnish and it's called Hard On. No jokes, please. And I just want the very thinnest of coats just to seal that UV resin in. So I'm going to start at the bottom. And this just gives it a really nice finish. Of course, if you've got a, a good UV resin like Solaris, you might not want to bother with this stage, but I always like to seal this type of buzzer with normal varnish because it takes a lot of effort to tie it and I want it to last as long as possible. So I'll set that off to the side to dry and it's a guaranteed fish catcher. In this size, I would fish it on the point and maybe size 12, 14's up maybe. But it's a great fly to have in your arsenal and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Thanks for watching. Be sure and subscribe to the channel for fly fishing content weekly. And I'll see you all next time.